Hey everyone. Um, so let's uh, start with the uh, deployment of the Palo Alto on the AWS. Now, before we begin, we need to make sure we have a couple of things that uh, need to be taken care here. So first of all, uh, you have to decide which uh, region you are going to launch your resources in, right? So I'm going to choose uh, Northern Virginia. Now, now you can choose any other region. So that you have to choose on the beginning itself, right? You, you might use Asia Pacific, Mumbai region. I mean, the reason being it, it would be closer to you and you would face low latency. And that totally depends on where you have the DC, correct? Where you want to set up the DC and uh, where you think your clients are basically the user. So uh, the point of creating a network is ultimately hosting an application, correct? And then you have to keep in mind uh, the most of the users should be around near that now aws has lots of services which could um, uh, which can be helpful to uh, achieve such a just such a uh, task but for us i'm gonna create uh, create the resources in northern virginia us east one okay so first thing we need to do is we need the vpcs vpcs are like a domain okay so by default you should have one vpc um okay uh, as you can see this is my default vpc so i don't need it as you can see on the tenancy it is saying default so what i can do is i i don't need it i can go and delete this vpc so i'll click on this and uh, uh, delete the vpc okay this vpc will permanently and cannot be recovered the following resources will also be permanently deleted so what are the resources the internet gateways the security groups everything so i want to do this because uh, uh, the thing is i want to have a fresh environment right so that uh, you guys don't um, have to worry about uh, having something which i don't which i have and you don't have so that we should be having the same things right Okay, if you delete this default VPC, you can't launch instances in this unless you specify a subnet in another VPC or create a new default VPC. Fine. So, uh, to confirm deletion, type delete default VPC in the field. So, I am fine. I know everything will be deleted. So, I'll just copy and paste this here and delete. Okay, let's wait for this. So, I have a brand new setup here now without a VPC. I will create a new VPC. Um, it is recommended if you have the um, prod. Um, applications or prod setup don't um, uh, instantiate or uh, spin up an instance in a default VPC that is um, the uh, recommendation from the AWS itself okay so that's why I deleted the default VPC now I'll, I'll create a new VPC okay uh, what is uh, so you have the option of creating um, everything through the VPC right you have the uh, what do you say the IGWS routing table everything but I will show you one step by step. So I'll say only VPC and then I will name the VPC as ZB Networks. Let's say VPC. Okay. And then the CIDR that I'm going to use is 192.168.0.0 slash 16. But I will be creating more subnets on this. And let's keep everything like this and create. So this this tenancy default is different from what I showed you earlier, right? So if I go to the VPC. And if I click on this, now if you check the, uh, what do you say? Huh, default tenancy, right? Default VPC, it says no. While as if you have the default VPC, this will say yes. Okay, so this is done. Now we have to create uh, subnets. Okay, so these are the subnets. The management interface, the inside zone, sorry. The DMZ zone, not the interface, the zones, right? Zones are basically subnets. So we need these four subnets and based on that, we will have the um, IP addresses. So first of all, I will just create the management uh, subnet and I will show you why. Um, I mean, we will be needing these three, but we'll do this later. Okay. So let's go step by step. Um, I need a subnet called management. Okay. So I'll go to the subnets and let's create a subnet. And this is uh, the, the VPC. And the name of the subnet would be MGMT, and the AZ would be your. Let's, um, I mean, availability zones are fine. You, you just don't select anything, just skip as default. And the CIDR block is going to 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Okay, that's all I need. 
Oh, and I am creating a VPC. Fine, this is my VPC. This is the subnet. I want to check the route table. Okay, this is the routing table of the subnet. I, and uh, if you check the routes, you have this and the subnet association is this. Now, I need a next step is that if, if you can see here, the subnet has no public uh, access, right? This has this is just for the local uh, access within the uh, VPC. Now, so because this is going to be my management interface, and I need to manage my firewall from public, right? Uh, public internet. So uh, we need a internet which is IGW on this uh, subnet. Okay. So for that, I will go to internet gateways and create one internet gateway here. Let's say ZB Networks IGW. This is what I want. Okay, that's all. Just create it and then attach to the VPC and then go and attach to the VPC that we created. Attach it. If I go to subnet management, right? Route table. I don't see any routes till now. I'll just say edit um, the let's go back i have to go to the routing table basically routing table here so this one right this one routes edit routes add a new route the default route say igw and the igw that just we, we just created save it okay so any thing that we create or connect to this uh, subnet will have the internet connectivity through the IGW and we can have the um, what do you say the static IP also enabled by default um, so that's uh, the first thing that we need to do and once this is done the next step would be uh, to create um, other subnets okay let's go and create the other subnets at least right so let's go and create another subnet which is DMZ with the 31. So I'll create the VPC. Um, let's say DMZ uh, 192.168.30.0 slash 24. Create. Second is 10.0 inside. Okay. Create subnet. And VPC is this one. So let's say inside and trust. Sorry, trust or inside. And this was, I think, 10.0, correct? Yeah. 192.168.10.0 um, slash 24. And last but not the least is the outside subnet. And this is going to be, say, outside. And say 192.168. I think this is um, 20. 0 slash 24 create the subnet okay when I do this I will see all the subnets so I have four subnets which are these right so and I should have different routing tables for this but uh, let's go and launch the uh, firewall first and uh, we'll do this um, the changes later on uh, step by step so first of all the thing is I need to launch a Palo Alto firewall and connect its management interface to the management subnet on the uh, ZB network VPC correct so in order to do that you will go to the EC2 section launch an EC2 here now on top of that you okay it's fine go to EC2 go to instances and say launch an instance and yeah, here you should type Palo Alto. My mistake, Alto. So if you uh, search here Palo Alto, uh, okay. So this is searching within uh, our this right. So I have to search here on the marketplace part, Palo Alto, and uh, on the AWS uh, marketplace AMI, we should see lots of options here. Uh, just give it some time. This is basically Palo.
click on here okay on the marketplace and let's say only the publisher mm -hmm. so this the first one is the panorama management server we don't need it we need the this one pan os version 11 next gen firewall with threat prevention you have other uh, options also uh, so this is next gen firewall with the core security pay as you go model subs and this is also pay as you go okay then you have bring your own license as i was saying and this is also with the 24 power 7 support this will basically have um, so if you want to see th uh, the details you can just click on this so let's say 24 power 7 support with the support then we will go for the pricing and you can see this is 1.6 dollars per hour and then the cost for the infrastructure is 0.216 right now if i compare this without the support which is this one okay this has all these things and what about this one free trial okay overview i will do yeah so advanced threat advanced filtering everything is there right global protect so we need this one only let's compare the pricing this one with the without the uh, next gen right so this is like cheaper than that one because this has more feature and this has less feature i mean um if you check the uh, estimated infrastructure cost it is the same only because you are going for a higher end uh, features you will be paying more so yeah so once you do uh, i mean decide on the version that you want to go with okay you are just going to select it correct so for us it was this one this one okay let's select this so you are going to subscribe for this and it may take some time um, to get the uh, subscription basically approved okay sometimes it takes time sometimes it is uh, immediately done okay once you select the emi then you go to the instance type which is already selected by default keep as um, as it is by default and then go for the key pair login you have to create a new one because i've deleted everything so i'll say this is palo palo alto okay and the pm pam file and create file so this is downloaded to my system keep it there and for the interfaces subnet is not going to be inside it's, this has to be on the um so, so the first one is going to be the management right mgmt because as you know palo alto has the management um plane separate right so and we will say enable the auto assign public ip or let's um, disable and because anyways we have to attach a elastic ip static ip right which is called the um is a uh, elastic ip in aws um, so and then you have to create a security group i'll say select a do i have something no because i deleted everything i have the default one let's not do it and then let's say create so this is going to be the default name anyways keep it like this and then it has two um basically inbound security rules ssh is allowed from anywhere and then https is allowed from anywhere so this is these are the two things that as of now we need so we will ssh to the cli and also we will access the gui using the https on the management rest everything is fine i'll just click on on the launch now we will have to wait for this to be um, approved and then we will come back to the ec2 console on the dashboard we will see if the instance has been launched okay it says it has been launched successfully let's go and check out yeah it is and it is still initializing so we will have to wait for this to get initialized okay give it some time so that it gets initialized and then i will come back so i will just uh, pause the video here and once this um, system is up the palo alto is up i'll come back and i will show you what to do